Welcome to Splatterlot! The magical, mysterious and extremely messy kingdom that invites ten brave young warriors to go head-to-head -head with those deplorable defenders as they compete to capture the much-treasured Splatterlot crown. Determination! Ah! Can the defenders keep the castle safe from the attackers? Or will our young warriors overcome every obstacle and find a true champion to rule the kingdom? Who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And who will go? Splat! Hello, I be Dick, he be Dom. And this, and this, and all of this be Splatlot, the show that can best be described as that, you know, that mystery present that you get on your birthday that hasn't got a gift tag, and you, you're not sure whether you should open it or not, but you do it anyway. What, that's the best way you can describe this show? Yeah. So what's inside, then? Inside what? Well, inside the mystery present, whether you don't know it's yours or not. Ah, <laughs> you see? Huh? You're intrigued, aren't you? Know, intrigued, uh, excited and nervous all at the same time. And that's what Splatlot is all about. Funny that, because I thought it was all about this. An opening challenge in the castle moat, where all ten attackers compete, followed by a messy dungeon adventure for the fastest six, and then for the four who survived that, the honour of competing in our moonlit final for the Splatterlock crown. Great, looks like we're going to have to stay up past bedtime again. Look, I'm still waiting. Are you ever going to tell me what was inside that present? Maybe. But look, we got tons to do first. For a start, there's the first round to describe in more detail. The attackers start in the Splatterpult. Beware the vile volley. Then it's up the slippery slope and across the rolling maze. Which leads to the impossible incline. The beastly battle axes follow. They chop till you drop. The bridge of disaster is next. Guarded at all times by the Aqualizer. And then a vault on the wavering warhead is all that stands between the attackers and the finish line. Sounds good, but it's about to get even... What's a better word than good? Gooder. Yeah, it's about to get even gooder. Meet the defenders. Today's moat dwellers are vain with the shades. I'm Fatal. Fatal with plenty of attitude. And Thorn with the creepy stare. Seriously, Thorn, stop it. Playtime's over. What do you use that thing for? Mashed potatoes? Does Vane think he's funny? Does Vane think at all? So let's head down to the moat. Our funny guy Vane is on the vile volley. Fatal's on the splatzooka. And Thorn's on the slime stick. All we need now is an attacker. Say hello to Nick. This place looks like a piece of cake to get through. Well, I don't know what piece of cake he has in mind. How about a nice slice of Splatterberg? Why well, have a piece of cake when you can just eat the whole thing? You greedy pig vein. Oink! Dodged it. Nick's almost across the mace. Oh, but, well, he just seems to jump into the moat. Fatal's got him in her sights. Flonge one goal! It's time to put the ice in on this one. Thorn thinks he's being clever, but Nick outsmarts him and is over the axes. Bane, I know you've been holding it out, but maybe today just break out the old bow and arrow. <laughs> I don't think we should be giving Bane any sharp objects, thank you very much. He seems quite happy with the equalizer. And Nick will be quite happy with that round. He's over the finish line in a very respectable 442. I love hamburgers! Jordan keeps the food theme going. That was a hamburger cannonball, bro. I like that. Flopsy Bam Bams! Welcome to Splatterlot. Good recovery on the mace. No one comes up here and takes our crown. Thorn's annoyed. Our burger boy's tackling this course with too much relish. Don't water down that hamburger. The bridge, with a little help from Bane, slows him down a little, but his vault on the warhead is pretty good, and he's over the finish line. And just like his food, his time is fast. Nice one, Jordan. Eat my fist, defenders! Can I have a burger instead? Hustling! Famous for loving all this talk of food. Well, he's certainly not focused on defending, which is good news for Jocelyn. I don't eat fists, I eat sandwiches. Fists are too bony for me. Bane's on a roll about sandwiches. But Jocelyn's off a roll. The mace roll sends her into the moat. And sadly, that's a splat too far for Jocelyn, who does not finish. Cowabunga! Cowabunga? No, she said cowabunga. Man, there you are. So nice to have another girl at the castle. Fatel's not happy with Saran's back chat. Oh, fish slap a splat bump. Saran's not too happy with the mace roll either. Can she get back on course? No, Saran, that's off course. Thorn vaporizes her. And it's enough to cloud her judgment. Cowabunga. Yes, it's another top battle axe splat attack. Onto the wavering warhead. Well, she's certainly wavering. But I think she's going to make it. Yes, Saran is over in a respectable 436. Oh, but there's nothing respectable about this victory dance. What is that all about? Both have more fun! Okay, Abby, prove it. Ball! Now, has Vane's aim improved at all? No. Oh, inches! And just to rub it in, here's Abby, and here's Vane's slime ball, missing her completely. Onto the incline. Oops! Frange Mongol! Oh, yes, Thorns. They want to have fun. I think defenders have more fun, Abby. 
Abby at the finish, uh, I mean finish line, but no, she's down. Well, she eventually finishes in 8.32. So we're halfway through round one. Remember, six attackers qualify, so with five attackers still to come, the person currently in first place is automatically through. And that person is Jordan. He's safe. Then it's Saran with 4.36, Nick with 4.42, Abby with 8.32 and Jocelyn who did not finish. So for the attackers who've just competed, it now becomes a waiting game. But for the attackers who are about to compete, the wait is over. It's time to get out there and start splatting. Now our last attacker, Abby, uh, brought up the notion of fun. Fatal then made the claim that defenders had more fun than attackers. So we thought we should put that to the test. Dick here is representing the attackers. Proceed. Well. Cake-loving Nick finished in good time, so his fun should continue. OK, give yourself a squirt. <laughs> Jordan already knows he's through. Plus, he got Thorn angry, so that's double the fun. What about Saran? Oh, one well, word. Cowabunga. Loads more fun. And Abby? Well, this was her idea, so she must have had fun. Right, on to you, the defenders. As you said, Jordan made Thorn angry, and uh, Fatal didn't like Saran's back chat, so uh, no fun for them. Plus, Vane's aim was awful, so overall he didn't have any fun either. Mm. Oh, so that uh, concludes the test. So in theory, it's fair to say that uh, attackers have more fun than defenders. And in practice, they do too. Here's the leaderboard again. Jordan leads with 356, followed by Saran, Nick and Abby, who's in the danger zone, because Jocelyn did not finish. So, ready for some more fun? No. <laughs> See, even Fatal's starting to have fun. I think she's laughing at Vane. Thorn still looks grumpy, though. Here's Jacob. If you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. I'm not Dutch. Then you ain't much. Trout spout! Hey, look! A flying Dutchman! <laughs> A funny line from Vane that's not about food. Krakenang! You ain't Thorn. You ain't Thorn. Didn't really think that one through, did he? Here's Jacob on the axes. Thorn's vapor doesn't bother him, and he's over. Remember me, I was at the start. I'm your bro. Uh, because he ran out. Jacob outsmarts Vane, but he can't outsmart the bridge. The warhead's a bit too clever for him, too. Fatal tries a sneaky splat, but Jacob stays sharp and finishes in 505. Great goo! Popcorn pickle! Another edible battle cry from Michaela. And another miss from Vane. You flipped like a patty there. Would you like fries with that? OK, so here's Michaela next to a giant burger that only Vane can see. Moving on to the axes, she survives the water blast but ends up in a popcorn pickle. Life isn't any easier on the Wavering Warhead, and the moat beckons once more. But that's still a reasonable time, which could be good enough for round two. I like bacon. No, Nathan, Vane won't be able to cope. Yes, once again, Vane's in a food frenzy and misses his splat. You like bacon, I like bacon, I like you. We're friends. Don't be distracted by the food references, Vane. Yes, Vane's Achilles heel is definitely his stomach. Nathan's lost it on the incline clack fracker. Well, the defenders might not be on form, but the course has really tested the attackers today. And after that spectacular splat, Nathan hasn't got the energy to continue. He's fine, but does not finish. Here's Tyree. Are you ready to rumble? Is that a reference to Vane's tummy? Splat for me! Twit clap! Fatal splats and Tyree stays her down with those red rumbling eyes. She bounds over the mace roll, but I think she's too fast on the incline and lobster lover! I think she was still angry with Fatal and just forgot to put her brakes on. Tyree, watch out for the chandelier! Chandelier? My grandma shoots better. That says maybe, but does she splat better? I doubt it. Splat for me, splat for me, Tyree, when you fall in love. Follow that, Thorn. You know, Tyree? That's certainly where you long to be. Is this still splatter not? Tyree seems to think so. She's still splatting. Good. For a minute there, I thought Andrew Lloyd Webber had hijacked the show. Well, she can sing and dance all she likes now, because that time is good enough. Powdered mini donuts. What a feast we've had with the battle cries today. Oh, what's the sound for? We're trespassing, Dylan. And it looks like Dylan's an uninvited guest on the mace roll, too. Not for long, though. I ain't going to sugarcoat it for you. That's gross, man. He wouldn't be slime otherwise, Dylan. Oh, Dylan just about recovers, but a Bobby Bash Box! That is a big splat. The water blast caught Dylan completely by surprise. Now that is a fatal distraction. Dylan still looks a bit disoriented, <laughs> and 
And floppy one. Well, to be fair, he's not bad at finding his way to the moat. And with that time of 4.32, he's not bad at finding his way to round two, despite him dealing with all that goo. After all that slimy rhyming, round one is complete. Through to round two are Jordan, Tyree, Dylan, Saran, Nick and Jacob. Well, round one proved to be particularly mm. tricky today, but we've got some uh, evenly matched attackers going through. Yes, the top five are all within a minute of each other. So that means our second round of sportiness ditch the dungeon should be a pretty tasty treat indeed. And just to prove how tasty round one was, here's our battle cry feast, fit for any royal banquet. We have Master Nick's piece of cake, <laughs> Master Jordan's lovely burger, uh, Miss Michaela's popcorn pickle, uh, Master Nathan's bacon, <laughs> and whose is this? Oh, Master Jacob's, uh, if it ain't Dutch, Dutch apple pie, best I could do. Mm, right. Uh, Master Dylan's mini powdered donuts, and uh, what's his business? Miss Saran's. Cow in a bun. Go. Oh. Say it quickly. Cow in a bunga. Faster. Cow in a bunga. Faster. Cow in a bunga. Yes. Ah, right, there you have it. The battle cry feast, which I'm sure will be enjoyed by one and all upon the announcement of our new monarch later on. But we've got an awful lot of splatting to do before then, so let's uh, remind ourselves who's still in with a chance of wearing that crown. In round two, we have Saran, Tyree, Nick, Dylan, Jacob and Jordan. But before they can even dream of ruling the Spatlock Kingdom, they'll need to ditch the dungeon. And here's how. The attackers start beneath the castle walls down in the dungeon. They must escape the stock market, cross the splat walk, and then climb the loathsome ladder. Those that make it to the top of the dungeon can claim one of four flags, the all-important ticket to the final. But the grimy, slimy defenders will be slowing them down at all times. So with six competitors and only four flags, we'll be saying goodbye to two more attackers very soon. But now let's say hello to three new defenders. Hello. hello. Hi, Scab. Nice to see you. How you doing? Kukuba. Hi, Kook. Looking good. And hello, Mediva. Now, how about a nice welcome for us? Welcome to... Welcome to... Welcome to... Line. Welcome to Splatterlock. Welcome to Splatterlock. What was all that about? First things first, Jacob's in orange, Jordan's in yellow and green, Tyree's in pink, Dylan's in green, Nick's in blue, and Saran's in zebra stripes. Scab's in a trance. So it seems his feeble little mind can be controlled by Coot using fire. Looks like Mediva's back to her usual self, though. She better hang up because they're off. Through the gate, easily enough. And onto the Splatwalk. Scab's about to make it pretty slippy out there. But Mediva's still on the phone. Mediva! Sorry, guys. I got to go. I got to go get my head, did you know? We're defending, Medeva. No, I help you see. I got to go, child. Don't go, don't go. Please don't go, please don't go. Well, this is unheard of. Medeva! So the defenders are down to two. OK, OK, you know what? We've got this. Hooter Maluta! Coop steps up and splats around. They need plenty more of that without Mediva. Team Australia! Team Aussie! Team Aussie! Nanky back! Scab's entering into the team spirit. No, it. no, 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 no singing when you're with me, you understand? I understand. No well, it's still early days for the coalition. I think they need to do more work on their team name. Who needs Mediva when you've got Kukab or Skabook, as I like to say? Well, Team Kukab or Skabook might not exactly roll off the tongue, but they've certainly got the attackers rolling down the ladder. Yeah. Nick's trying to fend off this terrible twosome, but he's down. Kukaba, switcheroo! Switchy! The defenders try a new tactic. Oh, but it's getting messy! Doesn't really look like they know what they're doing. It's absolute chaos! Surely the attackers can take advantage. And now they've splattered each other! I'm sure this wasn't how they practiced it. Come on, Kook! Intimidation! Finally, they start defending again, much to Nick's annoyance. Whoa. Who's back in the moat? Scab splats Saran and so does Kook. He loses his balance and she loses her grip, heading straight for the moat. Wanna go do some defending? Yes! Let's go! Well, if it's anything like their last plan, it should be entertaining. How about you press one button, I press the other one? Well, no buttons needed at the moment. Dylan's lost his balance and takes out Jacob. Saran's lost it again, and so is Nick, who takes out Jordan, who in turn trips Tyree. Yes, the loathsome ladder is working like an extra defender. Purple plague! Purple plague! Not the purple plague! Three, two, two, one, bang! Saran looks on open mouthed as the plague descends. But it's Tyree who's infected first. Saran eventually succumbs to the plague too. Well, the look on her face just about said it all. To be honest, I think it was saying, oh, Spar, I'm heading for the moat. Team Kukab are completely on top right now. The attackers are in disarray. The phone's ringing, I'll get it. Ooh, I wonder who that can be. It'll be Mediva. I know. Hello? 
He could have let it go to voicemail. He's got a castle to defend. Well, he seems to be doing OK. Well, it's Medeva. She says we're doing a great job. Well, how nice. Scab, ask her how her hair looks. Oh, charming, he's put the phone down. And Coop's put Jordan down, all the way down into the moat. Scab and Coop team up again with the pokey pike. And Saran bears the brunt, sliding headfirst again into the splat wall. Well, if it wasn't hard enough already for the attackers, they've just turned on the waterfall. Tyree slips and trips and decides to take Jordan for a ride. Here's Dylan. Oh, and the pokey pike sends him hurtling back down the ladder. Oh, Nick's down too, and he's off to join Dylan. But Saran's nearly over. Right. And from out of nowhere, Kook fends her off. How cruel. I'm sure she thought she'd won. She still might. Kook's under real pressure now. Four attackers are closing in. And somehow Tyree slips past Kookaburra and becomes our first finalist. Scab comes to Kook's rescue, and down go Jacob and Saran. But Nick and Dylan are still hanging on at the top. Dylan makes a break, and he's the second attacker through, grabbing the flag in triumph. Nick's not far behind, so that means there's just one place left. The three remaining attackers climb the ladder one more time. It looks like Coop and Scab have given up, so it's a foot race between Saran and Jordan. This is too close to call. Who's going to get to the flag first? Oh, Jordan slips, and Saran becomes our fourth finalist. Absolutely brilliant. That has to be the closest foot round of Ditch the Dungeon we've ever seen. It's a terrible shame for Jordan, but Saran is through by the tiniest of margins. Jacob takes the slide of shame first, leaving Jordan to have one final moment of glory. So close, eh, Jordan? Yeah, she's got some explaining to do. And these attackers have got some celebrating to do. For now, their dreams of ruling Splatlot are very much alive. Here's confirmation of the top four attackers who will be heading for our spectacular moonlit finale. We have Tyree, Dylan, Nick and Saran. Well, with so many evenly matched attackers, we just knew that was going to be extra special. Yeah, well, all that nonsense, though, with Medivh's hair appointment. I suppose, I suppose, though, it did lead to the birth of Team Kukab. I preferred Skabook. Either way, they'll be back in the final, defending another onslaught from the four attackers who all have their eyes on the prize. Now, there's hardly anything to choose between the attackers today, so... Uh, Good old splat hat's gonna have to work extra hard to find a favorite. Come to daddy. <clears throat> Saran and Nick are both evenly matched. Dylan has a slightly better record than either of them, with a third and second place to his name, which leaves Tyree in pole position. She finished second in the moat challenge and first in Ditch the Dungeon. So, Tyree is the favorite. Mm, but favorites don't always win. I think it's still too close to call. Yeah, here's a reminder of the final. Tyree, Saran, Nick. And Dylan. And here is the majestic moonlit course that stands between them and the Splatlock crown. It looks stunning, but this course is tricky all the way. The attackers start with a trip to the Dire Mire and the Barrier of All Barriers. Once through the gates, they have to teeter across the terrifying tees, which lead to the scary go-round. It's a short spin to the annihilating arm, which they need to climb over, followed by the gruesome twosome, which they must leap onto. The cruel and cunning clobbering cannons are next. Then it's down to the royal ramps and over to the rock wall. And at the top of that wall, the Splatterlock crown awaits the next ruler of this fine and messy kingdom. That's the course, but it wouldn't be complete without those defiant yet often self-defeating defenders. Yeah, they've been hit and miss all day. In Vane's case, mainly miss, and in Medivh's case, mainly missing. Vane and Fatal are paired up. Team Kukab, Skabook remain together. Thorns vaporizing as usual, and Medivh... I finally got my hair did. <laughs> well, that hair makes just about as much sense as that sentence. Here are the attackers. Saran's in zebra stripes, Tyree's in pink, Nick's in blue, Dylan's in green, and all are in it to win it. They're off and sprint over to the mire. Oh, that sprint is soon reduced to a trudge, though. The girls reach the barrier first, but out of nowhere comes Dylan. Hang on, he's let back again. Aha, he's lost a shoe. And some valuable time to boot. Charming and slimy, that's Fatal down to a T. And here's Tyree down on the T, but it's not to be. Here's Nick's first attempt, Ram Jam Big Jobs. Same result for Saran. Dylan's turn, he leaps and... Wompmonga! A splat worthy of any final. Now this is unusual, two attackers together on the T's. Could be tricky. Oh, it's so nice to see that there's camaraderie among the attackers. I love Not that. quite Fatal. Nick's over, and he's left Saran high and dry. Well, she's low and wet now after Dylan pushes past, but then he takes a dunking. Serves him right. Nick now leaping onto the scary go round. Oh, he's teetering and just about avoids the annihilating arm. Back to Dylan on the tees, looking good, and yes, he's bounced his way over. Nick grabs the arm. He's got to climb over it, but that makes him a sitting target. And to be seeker, Dylan gets a dunking. Nick's over the arm now and heading for the grease of Tucson, but he can't make the landing. You've just crossed over into the Splatlot zone. Thanks, Thorn. Back to Saran. She's still tackling the troublesome tees, but this time, she's made it. And Tyree, our tournament favourite, is over two. Ladies first. 
Tyree leaps onto the scary go round, but she's not looking steady, and down she goes! Funny, she steps off just as Saran steps on. She's made her landing and heads towards the arm. She gets a grip, but Nick's heading right for her, and he comes a dropper. Dylan now making his second attempt. Oh, he's struggling, and Dylan dunks again. Saran's still hanging on to that arm. She's trying so hard not to fall, but I fear the moat beckons. Wow! Everyone quit. I'm ready to go home. I don't care. Fane is such a slacker. Tyree's turn now to take on the arm. So far, so good. She's got a firm hold. Oh, and like clockwork, here's Nick. Thank you! Kook just reminds him he's in a competition. And Tyree is over. Snurfy Trombonio! She was over, now she's under. Nick's back at the arm. He's already completed it, but seems to have forgotten. Anyway, he's over and back on the scary go round. He now heads for the twosome, ignoring the goo grenades, but no, once again he's down. Saran is now ready to try the arm again. She manages the first bit, but she needs to climb over. There goes Dylan underneath. Kook spots and splats him. And Saran is over. Now, can Dylan do the same? He shrugs <laughs> off the water blast and climbs onto the arm. This time, Saran's underneath. But no, she's back in the moat. The arm has really slowed down the attackers today. And to prove that point, it's not letting go of Dylan either. Here's Nick at the cannons, and he gets a clobbering. High fives to everybody. Tyree at the twosome. And that's a terrific landing. Can Saran make it a pair? No, she can't. And with a little help from Thorn, Tyree joins her. Scab's in deep conversation with Nick. He wants none of it, but it ends in another splat. Saran leaps again and splats again. Movie dunkers! Tyree's turn to be clobbered. Somehow Dylan holds on to the twosome. Tyree at the cannons again, and it's the same result. The moonlit motor waits. Yes, Nick high fives yes, Scab, but something tells me that won't get him a free pass. I was right. Team Kukab Skabuka really messing with the attackers now. They don't know how to get past the cannons. Well, that's one way. Saran just runs and then she makes it onto the ramps. Tyree's over too. Look how wet it is out there. It's so wet I can see a rainbow. No, that's Mediva. Saran leaps, but the wall's too slippery. The defenders can sense the danger now. Tyree is now also on the ramps, so it'll soon be her turn to face the rock wall. Medieval keeps the water pressure high as she tries to dislodge her. But Tyree just about holds on. She takes a moment, gets a better grip, and starts to climb. Saran tries to join her, but no, she heads back down into the moat. Tyree's nearly there. Oh, that goo grenade nearly got her. But no, she's recovered and pulls herself to safety. She reaches for the crown and holds it aloft. Tyree is the new queen of Splatterlot. Dylan, Saran and Nick were outstanding, but they must all now bow before the triumphant Tyree. Well, what an amazing final. The boys took an early lead, and then both girls came back so well. But the splat hat tipped Tyree as the one to look out for, and she didn't disappoint. Mm, of course, there's something else that never disappoints. Mm, tapioca pudding. Tapioca No, the splat of the day. And rather fittingly, it came from Saran, who had a great final despite this splatty episode on the annihilating arm. She lost her grip, then backflipped into the moat. A very stylish splat indeed. Back to Tyree now and her journey to the crown. She did well in the moat challenge, clocking the second fastest time of the day. But that wasn't good enough for our queen to be, so she went one better in round two. She broke down Coop's defences and became the first attacker to claim a flag and a place in the final. She didn't have the best of starts, but she never gave up. And on the rock wall, she looked like a true champion. From that point on, the future of the crown was never in doubt. Let's head back to the castle to hear from the lady herself. All hail Queen Tyree. My first act as Queen of Spalot is to throw one of you into the moat. Sadly, it's not all of you. But tonight, it will be you, Vane. I thought as much. Really? I'd have gone for Mediva today. Yes, but he really lost it in round one. So, just like I said at the start, this show has been intriguing, nerve-tingling and exciting, just like... A mystery present with no gift tag. Can I open it now, please? Of course you can. <laughs> oh, dear. Black. That is so unfair. Life's unfair. Just ask Vane. Marvellous. We'll have plenty more splatty action for you next time. So until then, keep splatting. <laughs>